The year is 1980. Tensions are at a boiling point between the U.S. and the U.S.S.R. after a thermonuclear blast eviscerates a small U.S. Air Force base in the rural town of Damascus, Arkansas. The U.S. are swift to respond, firing a retaliatory strike at the U.S.S.R., which is dismissed by a Soviet officer as a false positive by their early detection satellites. As the American Titan II missiles plow through the Soviet countryside, the USSR is only able to mount a meager counterattack from remote satellite locations before it is completely wiped off the face of the Earth. China and France, in light of this sudden and terrifying American aggression, launch strikes of their own against the US. And after a short but intense series of reprisals, the world is razed to the ground by nuclear armed fire and human civilization along with it. Yet mankind is not doomed. During the Cold War, the Great, the Good, and the Gilded invested heavily in next-generation bomb shelters, enormous self-sustaining subterranean cryogenic compounds designed to preserve life until the outside world becomes habitable again. Compounds which, due to cost-cutting business measures in the name of competition and industrial espionage, failed to work entirely. Coolers. Bathed in lethal radiation, the greatest minds of the 20th century and all living memory of culture, technology, and agriculture are lost. While on the surface, the very hardiest specimens of humanity cling to life, survive, then thrive. From the ashes, a new world emerges. An ersatz post-apocalyptic stillborn 80s continues indefinitely, populated entirely by the toughest, meanest, and outright dumbest of God's creations, the wasters. Years later, however many nobody can say, even those who can count, the barren desert landscape of the western wastes is host to bitter factionalized warfare. The wasters fight tooth and nail over the most precious of natural resources, a liquid from beneath the sands that fuels all of uncivilization. Buried deep within the cooler's chambers, the very radiation that killed off society's chosen few imbued their potable provisions with a sick green glow and a radioactive buzz. Booze, it affectionately came to be known, and those dumb enough to weather its taste found themselves taking a sharp detour off the human evolutionary highway, mutating in strange and confounding ways, and acquiring both permanent brain damage and a ravenous addiction to the stuff. Against this backdrop of organized chaos, the wasters scrabble in the dirt, looking for just a drop of the good stuff, and the right guy in the wrong place at the right time with the wrong drink could be a major headache for those who seek power.
New boys, rip and trim. Hands where we can see him. Hate to break it to you, but you've just wandered your way into becoming the new boy's first big score. Yeah, new boys! Rip and shred! Nothing personal, it's just how things work out here in the Western Wastes. Uh, you do know how things work in the Western Wastes, don't you? See, rule of thumb around these parts is that you get wasted... Or you get wasted trying! And we're bad! We're tough! We're inexperienced, but we got the right tood. Even a virgin dingaling has a chance of being a bona fide bone blaster the first time through. Can it, boneheads? Bottom line is, we new boys aren't afraid to turn you into another wasteland statistic. Unless you hand over everything you got, and get the heck out of here. There's three of us and one of you. And don't be a moron. Just hand everything over and we won't have to kill you. B wait that's it? This ain't hardly no big score at all! Well, a new boy's gotta start somewhere. Heck, this Butt Munch came here to make a booze run with this stuff, to risk neck and nutsack down in the depths of the cooler, armed only with these thingamabobs. Ain't that right, waster? And if this crap's good enough for old Fartwhiff over there, it'll be at least three times as good enough for the three of us. We split it 50-50-50. Right, boss? Like rip and share, rip and share, rip and share! Shut it, you rat buffoon. We'll discuss it once we're in the cooler. As for you, waster, don't even think about following us in there. Yeah! We'll use your stuff to rip you to shreds! Rip and shred, baby! Rip and shred! Well, once we figure out exactly what these things are, anyways. You've been warned, waster. Waster's getting this thing open. <laughs> but what the? How'd you get past the lock? So you're telling me? Crap! Boss ain't gonna be too happy about this. Tell you what, I'm gonna get this thing open and lock you out like the boss wanted. Just you sit tight and don't try anything funny. You got it? Don't move, I mean it. Don't move. Trippin' hazards! The boss was gonna use these trippin' hazards to cover our tracks, but he spilled them all over the floor and now he's boxed in! Oh, this is horrible! 
stay back. These things will explode if they detect any movement. Please, Waster, you've got to help the boss.
Madre chica. I'm putting that thing away. I ain't here to maim you. Just your own road courier business. If a problem comes along, you must ship it. Not ringing any bells? Jeez, I'd ask if you've been living under a rock. But, uh, considering the venue of our little conversation, well, we road couriers are the big movers and shakers here in the western wastes. Movers, mostly. Shakings. More or less stopped since even the raiders have learned better than to hit our caravans. Pickups, deliveries, you name it. Anything needs moving from one garbage pit to another, you can count on the couriers. Well, let's see here. Nope. No can do, amigo. Looks like you ain't signed up for our delivery service. Tell you what, though. Come visit us up at the Oni Express. Just, uh, head towards Sacramento and follow the smell of booze. You'll find it in no time. The guy there will set you right up. Anyways, I'm already behind on my delivery, so I gotta skedaddle. Remember, the only express up in Sacramento. Can't miss it. See you later, waster!
Hold it right there, waster. This here's the Oni Express, one of the last safe havens out in the western wastes. And me and my friends up here intend to keep it that way, so keep your head out of trouble, and we'll let you keep it all in one piece, comprende? Dude looking for his wife back at the Oni. Brother be killing and chilling. Well met. Welcome to the Jin and Gout. We got the swills that kill, and they have too. That stench is the signature Jin and Gout smell. Locals out here can't get enough of it. Folks say you can smell it from a mile away. Two on warmer days. Just 30 sheets for a handmade cocktail. Any which way you want it. Just pick out your booze, Choose a mixer, and tell me how you like it, and I'll pour you something that'll really knock your socks off. Of course, we also offer a special mixer of the day, in case you're looking for something a little more exciting. So what can I get you? Here's what we've got on tap today. So what can I get you? Thanks for stopping by. Come back again soon. I wonder who's running the skellies. If a problem comes along, you must ship it. Welcome to the road couriers. Sure. Well, sometimes we're out making deliveries. We find things lying around. That's mostly trash, but also slightly not trash. Sort of like a used up napkin covered in crusted over fluids. But you take a closer look and someone's written I love you, Daddy, on the inside. <laughs> Found two of those the other day. Postmaster got us bringing stuff like that back to the Oni. Says the kind of nut jobs going around losing those kind of things are probably willing to trade a few sheets of TP to get them back. Sure, it's a little sleazy, but the way I see it, you ain't really ever gonna appreciate your most cherished personal effects till you're willing to trade them for some butt wipe. If you ever do something stupid and lose something important, like by leaving it somewhere unattended or by getting yourself killed, we'll put it up for sale at the Lost and Found. Well, my throat's feeling a little dry. Better go fix that. Greetings, ah, uh, waste of life? Is that the right one? Did I use the right term? Ah, uh, the kids today with the slang and so forth. It's distressing and unfamiliar. It is the parlance of a rambunctious youth with little regard for tradition. Yes. Anyhow, I'm Dick and this is Kissinger. A pleasure. Nicknames. Reluctantly, I assure you. Please don't busy yourself with the mental strain of figuring out why. It's never made any sense to me either. I suppose the scum lords, the gangs, the no-good nicks and the like, they despise success. You know, there's a cabal out to get me. There are people as yet in their cultural and mental infancy. Agreed. It's thrilling, of course, to see another young, violent drunkard in our midst. And I sincerely hope we can be of service to you. 
Oh, no need to be concerned. We're not like these hucksters and charlatans. They take a man's last sheep from right out of his cheeks. No, we have more than enough TP to be comfortable for the rest of our lives. It is confirmed as three ply. Magnificent stuff, like the tongues of angels. You really ought to try it. But that's besides the point. In our advanced age, I suppose we're some variety of consultant. We simply offer our expertise, our knowledge, our support. You know what they say? Two heads are better than one? Discounting, of course, moments nocturnal when a man seeks to relive certain urges. <clears throat> well, our, our new friend here has little interest in such matters. So, how may we help you? You know, Kissinger hates it when I use the M word. But in my teens, it wasn't like it is now. Barely any radiation at all these days. In my teens, I was exposed to an awful lot of radiation. Wasn't uncommon at all to see all manner of mutants. Anyway, Kissinger started a sprout for me down there. And not to put too fine a point on it, but I was of an age where I was about to become best friends with that area anyway. So things worked out pretty well. Some more so than others. Well, from what little I've heard, it was built by or for the use of doctors. Smart fellows, to be sure, but useless eggheads to a man. The title impresses me little. When one is stripped of accolades, accomplishments, guns, vile haircuts and whatnot. What he does then, that is the true measure of a man. Well, uh, sorry, I seem to be striking the wrong tone for such an occasion. Some environmental contaminant, no doubt their own doing meddling quacks, seems to have turned whoever was inside into some manner of mindless, violent beast. Now, of course, in the place and time we find ourselves in, this is not altogether unusual. However, these people, they scratch and bite. They are reduced to primitives. Quite so. Roddy mans, the kids call them. You'll be pleased to know that they can operate a firearm. Again, not unexpected for these lily-livered intellectual types. But the scratching and the biting and what have you. It smarts, to be sure, but it's also highly infectious. Such unpleasantness is usually best dealt with from afar. I wouldn't recommend tangling with them directly. Do the American thing and shoot them indiscriminately. Or employ devious cunning. There is an issue I wish to speak about with you in private. Dick, if you please, I must touch upon sensitive issues with our associate. Oh, certainly. Just let me know when you're done. Give me the signal. You know the sort. Please, come a little closer. Prying eyes turn up in places most unexpected in modern times. There is an issue that drives a wedge between myself and my companion, Dick. Dick remains blessed well into his advanced stage with a head full of hair. Such blessings have not extended to me, and I have become as bald as the day I was mutated. A situation I wish to remedy but have not the personal means. Appearances count for much in such a violent, reprehensible time and place. My presentation presents a disunited front and I appear as the junior partner in our enterprise. An unfair and frustrating position given the extent of my input. I do not wish to shrink into insignificance in Dick's shadow. I intend to go hard as it is said by the youngsters in my capacity as a professional. To do so it has become apparent that I require a prosthetic. Relieve 25 residents of the wasteland of their scalps. That would seem an adequate supply of air. Return to me upon completion of this task and you shall be appropriately rewarded. Thinking about sobering up, psych. 